Hey everyone, welcome back to the chess yard. This is Dhere Bagga and today I'll be playing the 5 minute blitz with 0 increment on lead chess. And during the game, I'll try to be as instructive as possible, like always, making sure that there's something to be taken away from the game. Post the game, we'll also have a quick computer analysis to understand how the game went, what could have been done better during the game as per the computer lines, so that we all improve. That's the whole motto behind this channel. And if you are a new visitor, please do subscribe to my channel and press on the bell icon so that you don't miss out on any of the videos that I'm posting up daily. So yeah, let's start off with the game and see how this goes. Got the black pieces, so I'll play with the Karukan defense, which starts with c6. And then we go for the center with d5. Opponent doesn't take, so we can definitely take. And now develop the bishop with tempo, attacking the knight. Knight will probably go on g3. Oh, he doesn't move the knight. That's a bit strange. But we can proceed with normal development moves. For example, pawn to e6. At some point of time, we can give a check as well with the queen. But the opponent would probably defend, so not much difference there. So I'll just fill up the knight on f6. The opponent pins the knight and I can just now play bishop on e7. Removing the pin from the queen. The opponent takes and I take back with the bishop. I've got the bishop pair now, which opponent of course doesn't want to let me have. So he takes the bishop now, I take with the queen. And as you see, uh, black has got good development here. White has castle on the queen side, so probably he's looking to for a good attack. Now let's see what is the best move here. If I play bishop here, I'm expecting the pawn to move forward. Give him some space as well. Let's not, let's develop the knight. He develops the bishop now. We can also cast on the queen side, making sure that there's some fun in this game. The lines would be interesting. Okay, let's take the knight. C5. We can pin the knight if required, but probably the bishop is pretty nice in this diagonal. Okay, so the opponent is looking forward to exchange uh, the knight versus the bishop. And I can first play the move bishop g4, attacking the queen, of course. Oh, I left it undefended. Oh, even he doesn't capture. My god, he assumed that I'm defending the bishop. It was hanging there. I was trying to kick away the pawn ahead so that my bishop comes back, but instead he didn't capture. That is strange. So let's take on the bishop now. Takes with the queen or the knight, let's see. That was a shocker from both the players. The bishop was not guarded on g4. And we both missed that fact. Okay, that was an equalizer then, I would say. Um, let's play knight on a4. The idea is to attack on b2 with a couple of pieces. That weakens up his structure as well. Okay, can we align the rooks? That should be helpful. Oh, what if knight comes in now? Uh, I should have moved the rook on d6 rather. I'm still in shock that both of us left the bishop there. Okay. What is he trying to achieve? I am still not pretty sure. Let's align the rooks. Now, probably here I would play pawn ahead. Try to sneak the queen away and then attack the opponent. Oh, knight goes back. Let's 
let's see if we can exchange the queens somehow or the knights at least we'll try to bring the knight on c5 next move if of course he doesn't play the pawn forward which he doesn't let's defend the pawn first we don't want to lose out on pawns pawns are very important and this looks like going to be an end game pretty soon the way we are exchanging stuff and that attacks the knight as well as the pawn of course we'll just try to exchange the knights here and the opponent will gain an extra pawn there but if he takes the pawn now on h7 we are going to take on f2 that comes with a check as well so he tries to defend that and i don't i don't want to exchange queens right now i'd rather place my queen backwards trying to attack the pawn Defends the a7 as well, just in case. And here I can give a check. Trying to push the king away, which he does finally. How is queen over here? It's interesting, but that leaves my a7 weak. Let's move the king. Okay, so preparing for rooks to be aligned. I'm probably doing a rook lift here and then trying to see if we can capture on a pawn. The rook will also be nice on b3. Again, the opponent is asking for a queen exchange, which we don't want. I think I can take on a pawn there. Let's take. The opponent can of course not take because it's pinned but he can take on the h7 of course if he wants to that's hanging for now some point of time i need to okay is there another free pawn yep there is gobbling some pawns there should be helpful Okay, he takes. Can I take with the rook? No, then my queen is attacked. Let me just uh, first take on the rook. I think he's losing a rook there. Yep, he is. Okay. Will that be a mate? That, that won't be a mate. Is Ah, oh, that's a mate for him. Game over. That was quick. Uh, both of us missed one big move there, but apart from that, the game was nice. Rook lift was nice here. Uh, the game changer was the rook lift. Both of us has had cast from the queen side, so it was important to take advantage of uh, the bad pawn structure of white there. And I took that. Taking the couple of pawns there uh, with queen, pinning the, uh, the king with the rook, that was the advantage. And then... It was all simple from there. Let's quickly analyze the game and see how this berserk game was because we were playing a bit fast in the opening and then we both missed a bishop there. So e4 followed by c6, the Karukan defense is generally nice, but uh, I goofed it up this time. Then d5, uh, opening was pretty good actually. He dubs the knight and I take on the pawn. He takes back with the knight. I play bishop to f5, developing the light square bishop first before closing the diagonal of it. He develops the queen now on uh, on e, e, e2 there, and then I play pawn to e6. Opponent responds with g3, and I develop the knight, attacking the knight, which he pins with the bishop. I also pin, remove the pin uh, by developing the bishop on e7, takes the bishop, I take back, he takes with the knight, I take with the queen. Open castles. So, development wise, we are still, I think, pretty much okay till here. No such bad moves as well. I develop the knight now on d7, the right move. Uh, he develops the bishop on the uh, g2. Here, of course, computer was suggesting that you should castle on the king side, not the queen side, because the bishop will then be eyeing your king side. 
but I wanted this game to be a bit more aggressive, so I just castled on the queen side, making sure both the rooks are aligned in front of each other in as soon as possible. Uh, here I wanted to play the move bishop to g4, and I delayed that by one move and played knight to c5. My opponent here plays knight to h4, and I was still under assumption that the knight is there probably, and I played uh, the worst move, I think, uh, ever I have played. <laughs> that is bishop to g4, hanging the bishop of free. That was pretty much strange, and I saw that just after placing my bishop there. And opponent also was probably, I don't know what he was thinking because you don't expect people to miss out on such moves as well, such blunders to cash in on it. He plays the bishop instead, doesn't capture it. Uh, I think he also missed the move just like I did there. Uh, both of us blundered there, but yep, then I took on the bishop. He takes back with the knight. And I go ahead with knight to a4, trying to just attack on the b2. And here my opponent played uh, c3. That was a beginning of weakening up uh, your pawn structure there. Then I just tried to uh, rook, do the rook lift or align the rooks on the d file. I, I was expecting this knight move as well to e5. I should have rather developed my uh, put my rook on uh, the d5 straight away, but that thought came later on. I aligned the rooks first. He moves king above. Oh, my computer is saying that you can go for an exchange here because you will lose a rook uh, for uh, a knight and a pawn. That is completely fine. Same take with the rook there. Okay. Why not with the queen? Queen takes is also fine, I think. Nope. There's some advantage with the rook. The discovery attack. Yep, probably that it is. Yep, and it's tough to defend on. Uh, bring the rook, find this move here. Even if it does, we can just remove this and now uh, rook from the diagonal of the queen. And uh, the attack on uh, b2 here is pretty strong. Uh, we are attacking thrice. He has got two defenders, which is one of them is the king. And if king tries to hold on to the pawn, uh, then probably we can just just make sure that we are not going for the attack straight away, but build on to it. Just bring the rook back. So that can be a different line altogether. Let's go back to the game where I didn't take on the knight, but tried to kick the, the knight away. Knight goes back to um, b3 here. And I played queen to d6 now. The idea is to just keep attacking over here as well as defend the pawn, trying to make sure that we are able to exchange the knight as well, which is now the defender of the king side. Here the opponent plays uh, rook to e1, and I just defend the pawn, which was being attacked twice. So got two defenders now, so all solid. Here he plays uh, queen to e4, a nice move, I would say, attacking the knight as well as the pawn on h7. I go for the knight exchange, which he has to now. I take back. Now again, he cannot take on h7 because his pawn is being attacked uh, on the f2. He tries to exchange the queens again. And because the opponent is willing so much to exchange the queens, you don't have to exchange the queens. Simple for that. Whenever the opponent wants, you don't do that. So you just try to move your queen away. And I place it on a5 this time, trying to tank the pawn on a2, opponent plays a3, again weakening up his king side pawn structure. Now I give him a check, he has to move back and he goes to b1. And now I just put my king on b1, b8 first so that the a7 is guarded when I move the queen away. Opponent tries to align uh, on the d file so that if some exchange happens, he's prepared for that. I do the rook lift here by placing rook on d5. The idea was always to go on uh, b5, but opponent didn't see that coming probably and did the rook alignment on the d file. I played rook to b5 now, attacking the center pawn. And of course, uh, the pawn on a3 is now weakened up. I can take it. And opponent does a mistake here. Again, offering queen exchange. He was pretty much tempted to exchange the queens there. Looking forward to an endgame, but that gives a free pawn, so I took it. And now again a bad move, I would say, playing d4, not defending the pawn on c3. Because again, the pin remains on the king with the rook over there. So I took on 
the pawn again. He continues to take the pawns and missed out that his rook was hanging. Yeah, I couldn't see that on the first go, but eventually I found that move and took on the rook where he takes back. Oh, he took another pawn there. Uh, probably thinking that he can develop in, into a queen sometime or just give a check with the queen, try to do some tricks and mate me from there. But that was unlikely and he in fact missed a mate in one, which was queen takes on b2. And that's how the game ended pretty quickly. I hope you liked the game. Uh, interesting part here was both of us made mistakes. We, we are humans and we are bound to do that. But those should not be ha happening in at this level. Uh, so no excuses for that, but yeah, the rook lift was nice. Uh, how to place your rook on the uh, fourth or fifth or sixth ranks so that you can probably uh, attack with a couple of pieces on the opponent's king. I hope you liked the video. Please do let me know your feedback. Do keep watching and sharing. Thank you so much for your time. Take care. Bye-bye.